This call is being recorded. Welcome, everyone, to the Guiding Light Ministry International Prayer and Bible Study Conference Call. This is your Friday Night Light edition, and I am your co-host, Pastor Mark McCoy of New Harvest E-Church, along with Pastor Paul McCoy of, from East St. Louis, Illinois. We just want to say to each and every one of you that have joined us tonight and those that are going to listen to this recording later, we welcome you to this ministry. It is my opportunity to present to us tonight and introduce to some our guest speaker. She is uh, a regular on the Guiding Light Ministry, um, especially the Friday Night Lights broadcast. she is a retired teacher, uh, used to work uh, with the children in the Head Start program. Um, and, and you can always feel when she's talking her heart for children and her heart for the little ones. Um, as I, I know her, uh, came in contact with her through my Sister, Pastor Helen Price, her and Pastor Price are best friends, very close friends. And um, and so our speaker has been on this line and just, you know, she's the, she's the California voice, if you will, that comes on and just, just prays with us and, and, and shares with us. And one thing I've learned about her that I just wanted to lift up tonight I don't ever have to worry about knowing somebody praying for me because I know that she's a great prayer warrior and intercessor, and and I don't have to call her and tell her what's going on or anything, but I know that that's just her habit to to lift up this ministry and all of us that are on this line. And so I praise God for her. Uh, Without further ado, I'm just going to turn the mic over to our good friend and, and uh, preacher, teacher, Reverend Treva Kelly. Let the Lord use you accordingly. Praise Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just want to thank you, Pastor Mark and Pastor Paul, and thank everybody. A, a shout-out to my pastor, Pastor Jay, Arthur Ruff, um, and the Great Amy family, and all of my brothers and sisters in Christ, the family and extended family, uh, I, I, the list goes on and on. It is just a pleasure. It is just a joy to be on this prayer line and to be to be on this uh, ministry. And I, I want to thank you for the opportunity. Now, I won't be long-winded like I was the first time you asked me to speak. It, this, this is going to be a very on-time message. Um, but I just thank you for, for allowing me another opportunity. Be be used to God. Let us pray again. Father, all of you and none of me, I surrender myself to you, Lord, and I just say, Holy Spirit, use me in a very powerful way. In Jesus' name, give you the glory. I give you the praise. I give you the thanks. In Jesus' name. Now, the thing for this month, when I asked uh, Pastor Mark, is the joy of the Lord is our strength, which is taken from Nehemiah, the the uh, uh, eight ten, um, which talks about how the joy of the Lord is our strength. I'm coming from the book of Psalms, chapter sixteen, um, verse eleven, as well as the book of Psalms, the fifty first chapter and verses 10 through 12 tonight. So even though that is the core scripture about being our strength, the Lord had brought me to um, through my studies to these verses. Okay. The Encyclopedia of the Bible de- defines joy as gladness, number one. Number two, mirth. And number three, exuberant joy. The Hebrew meaning of joy is Shema, which means shine. Also, jail, which means to go around, go about, and means motion. 
Now, the Old Testament describes joy in the following manner. Number one, the state of mind as being in any pleasurable experience. Number two, joy in the context here is a religious emotion. The following Psalms describe joy in the following manner. Psalm 16, 11, Amplified. Now you've got my feet on the path, all radiant from the shining of your face. Ever since you took me by my hand, I'm on the right way. And now we go to Psalm 51. In the Amplified Bible, it it showed verses 7 through 15. Soak me in your laundry, and I'll come back, come out clean. Scrub me, and I'll have snow white life. To me in to foot tapping songs. Set these once broken bones to dancing. Don't look too close for blemishes. Give me a clean bill of health. God, make a fresh start in me. Shape a Genesis week from the chaos in my life. Don't throw me out with the trash or fail to breathe holiness into me. Bring me back from gray exile while you put a fresh wind in my cells. Give me a job teaching rebels your ways so the lost can find their way home. Commute my death sentence. Give my salvation, God, and I'll sing anthems to your life's given ways. I'm buttoning my lips, dear God, and I'll let loose with your praise. In looking at these passages, we see how God uses joy to not only strengthen us. In Psalm 16, 9 through 11, knowing that even death can't separate us from the Lord, Strengthens the psalmist's confidence. He fears separation, but he remains confident, seeing the Lord. Psalm 16:9 and Acts 2:26. Um, it says, "And I rejoice." The Greek version reads, "And my tongue shouts His praise." The apostles applied this text to the resurrection which is shown in Acts, the second chapter, verses 25 to 33. In verse 11 of Psalm 16, God will show us the way of life, granting us the joy of his presence. The Greek version reads, you have shown me the way of life, and you will fill me with joy of your presence. You know, this reminds me of also in the Psalms, 119, 105, when it talks about God's word being a lamp unto our feet and a lamp light unto our path. When we get the joy of the Lord in our in our lives, He's going to put us on the right path. His joy is going to shield us and protect us and give us the strength to keep going on. His joy will make a way for us that seems where there's no way to be able to just praise him. And no matter what we're experiencing, we can know that with God, we can always have joy, not this happiness that that changes um, with the wind tossing in every which way. When you have God's joy, he's going to shine a light on your path. It's going to illuminate your way, his joy. His joy. Now, in Psalms, the 51st chapter, verses 10 through 12, we see God's spirit renews and recreates the human spirit. He's going to give you a scrubbing. He's going to wash you out like laundry. And that's just what the joy of the Lord does. You know, in the midst of everything, his joy will pick you up. It'll clean you out. And I mean, when you were feeling sadness, when you were feeling you didn't have much strength, when you felt like you just couldn't go on another second, joy shows up and cleans you out. 
But in the midst of the cleaning, God fills it, he fills you up with his presence. I can't explain it, but each and every day I go and sit in my I go and sit in my um garden with my mother's backyard. And I have these um my neighbors and I uh foster cats. And um We've been doing it a few years, so we feed them, and they they live outside, of course. But um, I sit there, and while the cats are eating or whatever they're doing or just resting, and I'm looking at the garden, and I've taken up gardening, too, since my mother has been um, on treatment. I work in her garden a lot, and I sit there, and I pray as I'm working, or if I'm if I'm watering or are working with the collard green bushes that I'm I'm trying to trying to grow and making sure they're okay. I can just sit and I can just get in the presence of God. Sometimes a wind will come up and I, I, I just I just imagine that that's the voice of the Lord. And I say, Yes Lord, I hear you. I hear your voice in the wind. Sometimes I'm tired Sometimes early in the morning it's cold. Sometimes it's hot, as we have different kind of weather, um, even throughout the day. One point of the morning it can be 54 degrees, but by that evening it might be 85 or 90. And I'm out there, I have to dress to the different weather, even of that day. But no matter what, I can sit there and I can just have a have a little talk with Jesus. And I can feel halfway through our talk, I just feel the joy of the Lord in the midst of everything. And you always, you know, when his joy comes, I just can't explain it. it just, it's just something that tears begin to roll. It's just a peace that comes over you. And all I can say is, yes, Lord, I hear you. Joy, joy, I can hear where there was once mourning, where there was once um, sadness. Joy has come in, and I can hear myself sometimes laughing on the inside. When you have joy, you have strength. Now, um. Another thing I read from Psalms, the 51st chapter, verses 10 through 12, was a loyal spirit yields the inner qualities of constancy and perseverance. And then it went on to say, your Holy Spirit, or your spirit of holiness, only the power of the Holy Spirit can change the human will to make it loyal. And willing to obey. See, that's what joy will do. God's joy will not only set you on the right path. God's joy will not only clean you up from the inside out. God's joy will not only bring you peace in the midst of storms. God's joy will make you loyal and willing to obey. You know, there may be ones out there that want to know how can... um, How can we have this in our lives? Well, I'm going to tell you, there are three things we must do in order to experience God's joy. Number one, we have to be willing to surrender our will to God, asking him to fill fill us with his joy. Sometimes, especially on a a Saturday morning or Sunday morning, I don't want to get up. I I, I don't want to begin my day. I, sometimes I have to get up, especially on my Sunday morning schedule, or if I have a doctor's appointment, or if my mom has an early appointment. I got to get up early, talking like 5.30 in the morning early to be outside with my kitty cat clothes on, I call them, ready to feed these cats that I know are coming and sing them their good morning song. And it's cold I, or, or, or it's humid. And I just don't want to go out. I, I you know, but then, but then I see those little faces as they come over the fence. 
and they their tails go up as they see me coming. And I sing the good morning song, well, not on Saturday and Sunday, but during the week, I go out a little bit later sometimes. And I sing them a song. And as I sing that song, and they come over that fence, and they begin to meow, I just feel, I just feel the joy of the Lord come over me. And I soon forget I didn't want to come out there. Or I, as I tell them good morning quietly on Sunday morning, and as I watch the sun rise, I just, I just thank God that in a few minutes I can go begin to get ready to get ready to go to the first to hear Sunday school on the God of Light Ministries line, and then get ready to go to my church for worship, and, and just, and, and, and just knowing that souls are going to be saved, that God's presence is going to be there, and that He's going to move in a mighty and powerful way. I begin to get joy. And uh, there's so much sometimes that I have to do, not only for, um, in terms of my mom. Now, my sister's here, and she does a lot of the work on the weekend, you know, get her, get her mom's breakfast and everything ready. But during the week, Monday through Friday, um, it's my mom. Um, I'm here with my mom, and also I have a care, we have a caregiver that comes in four days a week. And But on Friday, I'm here with my mom, and then we have to get dressed and, and go to um appointments and for her and um sometimes I'm really I'm really tired and today I thought I I just was praying and believing God it was this this I had to do but God made a way at every turn I'm not even as tired as I usually am I was able to come we we were able to do what we had to do and uh come home I got took care of her I cleaned up after my friends, I know, I know they're waiting. For, I know they're wondering where I am now because I usually stay out there with them an hour and a half in the evening. But I went out there about an hour early, cleaned up, spent time with them, I enjoyed myself, and was able to still come in and before and have a time with God, really getting into uh, praise and worship music, and um. I just thank you for those, those, just the little things that I thank God for. And uh, God's joy, God's joy. But I had to come to a certain point where I surrendered everything and ask him, you got to surrender your will to God. And after you've been spanked so many times, you'll, you, you'll learn how to say, God, I surrender before you have to say, I surrender. And that's when you, um. We could turn over every day and say, Lord, fill me with your joy. Fill me with your joy. And uh, um, I just thank you for filling us, and he will fill you. Number two, we must allow God to place us on his path for our lives. That means we got to get in our lane, and we got to, it needs to be the God lane. It needs to be the path that God has called you on. I'm not talking about following your friends, following your family. You got to make up in your mind that we're on this road. And in, in, in order to be on this road, we got to do it God's way. I often hear people say, it's my way or the highway. But we got to get that way with God. We got to say, God, it's your way. And we want to be on your highway and allow him to lead and direct us. And then that way we'll have joy. Now, I'm not saying always that the experiences we, we're going to encounter because we have a devil that wants to fight us on every turn who's going to try to take your joy. And I once heard a sermon um, by Jerry Savelle entitled, If the Devil Can Take Your Joy, He Can Take Your And Keep Your Good. Now, if you want to get in trouble and get on the wrong path and lose your joy, take your eyes off of God. Get on, get on another path that is is not the path that God has chosen for you, and watch what happens. Not only will you lose your good, but you'll—I mean—you'll lose your joy, you'll lose your peace, you lose everything. And so we need to—we need to remember that we got to stay on God's path, in um, in order to have His joy in in our lives. And uh, how we stay on this path? Number one, through prayer through worship, and through getting into God's word. That's how, that's how I got in light for this, this, talking about a God in light. God's word, again, is a God in light and a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. 
And that's where the joy comes in. You know, the joy will fill you up as you as you obey God. No matter what people think about you, I'm, I'm sure people have thought that I was a different breed. People look at me, and and they they can't believe that. First of all, they they can't believe that um, I am for real. Uh, because I'm a peculiar person, I always have been a peculiar person, and I always will be a peculiar person. Because um, I don't go by the same drumbeat as a lot of people do. I've learned, I've been strength enough, I've learned to keep my focus and to just stay in God's perfect will, no matter what family, friends, or anybody else thinks. And that's the way we got to be. We got to get on God's path if we want to succeed in life. And number three, we must encourage ourselves in the Lord. Like I said, there's some days when I when I don't even feel like getting up out of the bed. And um throughout this year, I gave a testimony Sunday. And it's on Facebook. If you want to go back and like Great AME Church, it's on Facebook. My pastor asked me to pray for the recovery ministry. And just before I prayed, I came right at the end of the uh, Voices for Christ choir, which is my choir. I'm actually a member, but I haven't been able to sing or go to choir rehearsal in quite a long time. And um, that, I, that, that my choir is saying, and they sang a song about um, loving Jesus and worshiping him. And it's one of my song, favorite songs. The Holy Ghost hit, and right after that, I got up and just began to testify about the goodness of God and sharing a, a story about how how um, God is healing my mom. The chemo is working, and I, but I just went on to thank God for the ministry, ministry of our church, and just for all of them, not only in my behalf, but for all those on the recovery list, because of the visitations, because of the of the the um, live stream, because of so many things, I was just praising God and worshiping Him for that. But I said that all of that is a part of ministry. The Holy Ghost hit that place, and I mean it was just, it was just an anointed service. And then my pastor got up and preached a powerful anointed sermon on forgiveness. I haven't heard too many people preach on that, so that 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 ministered to my heart. I just found myself rejoicing and praising God. But um, in the midst of everything that we're going through, whether you're having um trials or not having trials. We can have the joy of the Lord. You know, um, I was thinking the other day, one of my God's children, and I just shout out to her. Her name is Joy. And true to her name, boy, when I think about Joy, I get to laughing on the inside because um, because uh, I read her post, I read Amber's post, I get joy. When I read my nieces and nephews' post, I get joy, you know. And I, I've known these young people since they, before they were born, all of them, you know. Um, my godson, I I knew him when he was a little bit older, Don. He was he was nine years old when I met him, but I get joy when I uh, think about think about them. But I, I I bring up joy because she always has. Um, I I hear her laughing, and sometimes she likes to do practical jokes. Uh, but no matter what, joy, joy exudes joy, and I mean that that has helped me through a lot, you know. And I just think about that, and she'll send me songs sometimes. She'll send it right at the right time, or send me prayers right at the right time. God, mommy, how you doing? Um, and the same with my nieces and my nephews. Um, I look up 
especially my oldest niece, she'll, she'll uh, just send me a text asking how we're doing, just checking in on you. I, I get joy when I think about that. I used to get joy when I worked with the children. And even now, I can be at a bank or at the hospital. And a child will just come up to me and start talking to me. And I'll tell the parents, um, I used to be a teacher. Maybe that's what they see, you know. And I just, I, 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 I love children. I love to see them. I love to talk to them. But I see joy. I see joy in the flowers. I see joy in every aspect of God's creation. The joy of the Lord is our strength. So let us remember to encourage ourselves and be happy. In closing, I promise that this wouldn't be be wouldn't be long tonight, and I'm going to be true to my word because I I went on too long the last time that I spoke. Maybe it wasn't long enough, but um I want to share a couple of more things. We can only have strength. By allowing God to fill us, direct us, and surrender to God's will, we're all either going through trials or preparing to go through trials. It's comforting knowing that we can have God's joy no matter what we face. Praise God. I just wanted to say as I close that um, joy Joy causes you to be grateful every day and to, and, and to just thank God for the little things. Joy causes you to laugh in the midst of storms. Joy will fill you up. Joy will give you peace in times of struggle. Joy is one of the nine fruit of the spirit. There's just so much on joy. And I didn't have time. Oh, I wanted to go so much. But I wanted to go in many, many directions. But this is the direction that God led me in. And all I can tell you, I feel the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah. But joy, 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 joy. Joy. It's one of the one of the best fruit of the Spirit. Allow God to set you on his path and to, to, to clean you out. Surrender your will to God so that you can be filled with the joy of God, which is our strength. And um, I just give God the glory for his joy. Because in, in times like these, with everything going on in our nation, we need to know that we have joy. I want to share one more, um, one more praise report. I remember a few months back, we were in a, a few of us uh, on a ministerial team were talking to our pastor. Now we have an older congregation. And in, um, as many churches are experiencing, a lot of millennials, we had the ones that grew up in the church, you know, and they're there. And, but the ones between, and I guess the late 20s to the to the 40s, we didn't have a lot of them. And I told pastor, we're getting ready to have a revival, and they're going to be filling this church up. I believe that was in March or April of this year. And I just, I said, I see a revival coming. With all that's going on in this country, they're going to be, they're going to begin pouring into churches because they're looking for answers, and the world is not giving it to them. And they're, they're going to be up against rocks and hard places. And they're going to be coming back to the church. Lo and behold, a few weeks ago, I had a young man come. He gave his life to Christ. He had grown up in our church. He was an acolyte. But he said his, his mom and his grandma and his aunt brought him to church. He wanted to have a relationship not only with Jesus. He gave us, he got saved. He wanted to come and join church for himself. He's been coming. Not only did he come, the next week he brought his girlfriend, and she gave her heart to Christ. And they're millennials. Hallelujah. God could have stopped right then, there. A month later, 
we had another young lady. We had a man who, a, a brother, brother Coleman, who's gone to be with the Lord. But he and several other people would go to one of the housing projects. Um, uh, Sister Helen is familiar with this. Dickinson Garden. It's in the Watts area, too, in, um, of Los Angeles. He would go into Nickerson Garden and pick up maybe, uh, I think 10 kids were coming in. There were two, he and somebody else that was, was working with him on his team. And they brought these young people and children to church every Sunday for years. A couple of weeks ago, one of those young people came with her, with her boyfriend and their little baby, and they joined the church. I believe her boyfriend got saved. She said that she was saved. But they joined our church. And I think they're going to be baptized together uh, not too long from now. And then and then they came last week, which was their second week, and they brought a friend with them. So I, I just, I'm just rejoicing because we're, we're having revival. It's the beginning of a revival, and I just thank God for that. So I just thank God again. In order to have the joy of the Lord, which is your strength, we gotta surrender to God's will. We gotta, we gotta uh, 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 ask God to fill us with His joy every day, and we must allow God to place us on His path, not our path, for our lives. And as I said, we must do this through prayer worship and getting into God's word. And we must encourage ourselves in the Lord. So praise God. I want to thank um, Pastor Paul, Pastor Mark and Pastor Paul um, respectfully. And I thank all of you. And I just, uh, uh, I just give God the glory for you. I love each and every one of you. And now I turn the service back over to you, Pastor Paul and Pastor Mark. For um, comments amen. and I love you guys. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise As we God. were receiving the word, you could hear the joy of the Lord all through the uh, minister Treva's delivery of God's word. The joy of the Lord was just permeating. And if you're on this line now or listening to this recording later, you might be saying, I, I want to have that kind of joy. I, I, I want to feel the joy. I want to experience the joy of the Lord. Well, well, uh, Reverend Treva laid it out. Surrender your will to God. Allow God to put you on the right path. And And you got to pray, you got to worship, and you got to study his word. Well, all of that starts by you giving your life to Christ. And the word of God tells us that all we have to do is call on the name of the Lord and we shall be saved. So we're going to pray a prayer of salvation with you. That you might be able to call on the name of the Lord so that you can have the joy of the Lord. And the joy of the Lord can be your strength. Let us pray. Dear Father God, I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus died for my sin and was buried and that you raised him from the dead. I repent of my sin. Please forgive me of my sins and come into my heart. I invite you, Jesus, to become the Lord of my life to rule and to reign in my heart from this day forward. Please, Lord, send your Holy Spirit to help me obey and to do your will for the rest of my life. Fill me, Lord, with your joy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, 